Well, speaking of the spill, the political oil slinging coming fast and furious. The crisis taking center stage on Capitol Hill from attacking BP to setting up the $20 billion escrow account. But with all of this finger pointing going on, can either side benefit politically? Let's bring in our political panel. Justin Safey is a former spokesman for Jeb Bush. Richard Socrates, former special assistant to President Clinton and a Democratic strategist. And you're both uh, joining me today. Appreciate it. Um, before we get into the BP finger pointing, I just, I, I, I'm so curious about your reaction about Tony Hayward um, yachting in the oil-free waters off of England. And Justin, let's start with you on that. Sure. Look, uh, here in Florida, we're 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 got, getting attacked by this oil spill. It's it's get, getting ready to come up on our beaches, and the image of the CEO of BP going on a yachting trip or a yachting, uh, watching a yachting competition, it doesn't sit well with us. We need a better response from BP. We need a better response from the federal government, and that's not that doesn't play very well politically. It's tone deaf. Richard, uh, I understand that you're having possibly some audio problems. Can you hear me? No, you I can hear you fine, okay, Juliet. Good. So, what do you think? About this, uh, Tony Hoover. Definitely not Hayward the best channel. time. Be definitely not the best time to go uh, watch a yacht race, right? I mean, uh, this guy has really got to get some good advice here, and uh, it's hard to know what they're thinking. But you know, this week a lot of stuff came together. I mean, I think this twenty billion dollar uh, uh, fund that they agreed to do was a good step in the right direction. I think the president demonstrated that he is on ch in charge and on top of this. So I think we made a lot of progress on this. I think now going forward, you know, uh, the country is going to be asking for a direction from the president and from members of Congress. What do we do to make sure that this kind of thing doesn't happen in the future? And I think we saw with uh, Mr. Barton's comments, which I know we want to get into that there's a huge difference in the parties, between the parties, as to how this kind of thing will be handled going forward. If the Republicans take over Congress in the midterms, Mr. Barton will be the, be the person in charge of overseeing BP. You know, I've got to say the D Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, you know, they're, they're accusing Republicans basically of standing, I mean, this is the quote, standing behind BP. You know, you've got the Republican congressman fighting back saying uh, President Obama has basically dropped the ball here. He's being dishonest is actually what the quote was by taking credit essentially for this $20 billion um, fund being set up. Justin, you say, you know, I mean, it's like, we hear this all the time. You're basically saying the Democrats are trying to change the subject to get the, you know, the political spotlight or the spotlight off of Obama. The other side says the same thing. But go ahead. Why? Absolutely. How? Uh, look, uh, yeah, listen, uh, right now, a poll came out this week that said that 52 percent of Americans don't approve of President Obama's response to the Gulf oil catastrophe. He gave a speech from the Oval Office, the first time he's ever given a speech from the Oval Office, and it got panned by those on the right and on the left. So Congressman Barton makes this comment that was repudiated by Republicans in Washington, D.C., yet the Democrats are trying to make political hay out of it instead of really focusing on what should be the top priority, which is how to protect the coast lines of the Gulf states from the oil that's approaching the coast. We need more boats in Florida. We need more skimmers in Florida. There are only 20 skimmers right now protecting the, the, the shores of Florida. We need more resources. And it's unfortunate there's political game gamesmanship going on in Congress. But, well, man, I think, you know, I've got to be honest I, with I, you, you know, saying, saying, standing up for B. BP was a little shocking, I think, to a lot of America. I want to play you something, though. Let's hear what Congressman Trent Franks had to say, because he was basically um, backing up Joe Barton, but also he was saying that uh, there are, there's some political, political exploita exploitation going on. Let's listen to this quote. The president has tried to exploit this politically, and the reason people like Joe Barton uh, responded in some ways as they did, they may have misstated uh, it, but the, the reason that they really were concerned is that this is a president who's presided now over virtually a takeover by government of about half of our economy, whether it's the housing industry or the automobile industry or the insurance industry, uh, uh, at the, the, the health care industry, and now he is saying uh, something he has no constitutional power to do as to what a private company is to do internally. Just to, just to clarify, um, he mentioned misstatements. He said, you know, he may have misstated it, uh, referring to uh, Joe Barton. Um, as far as, speaking of misstatements, according to my information, the government currently controls 21% of our economy. That's less than a quarter. So um, I think Americans are kind of saying, look, we, we need facts. We need solutions. We don't want misstatements. We don't want bluster. And we don't want hyperbole. Listen, I think I think there's I think there's a you know a tendency in Washington to talk about everything in terms of politics. But I think that the president demonstrated this week that the government was on top of the situation in terms of 
doing as much as and, and as quickly as they could on cleanup and trying to get the the leak fixed and stopped as quickly as possible. But, you know, Mr. Barton apologized for that comment, but he didn't say, what he didn't say was that he didn't mean it. And it was a fairly insightful uh, comment which provided, I think, a lot of information to people about, about what he what his thinking was. Just and one, one party in this country thinks that BP ought to pay and make this right, and another party thinks that they're the ones that have been wronged in this. I mean, Justin, go, go ahead and jump in because I saw you shaking that's your what, head on you. You're gonna want to yeah. That's ridiculous. Uh, look, no, no, no. Republicans are saying that BP shouldn't pay. Republicans That's are saying That's what Mr. Barton was saying. He was saying he was saying that they should be We should be apologizing yeah, to them. Flo U.S. Senator George Lemieux from Florida proposed this idea of having this fund. This, and he's a Republican. Listen, this guy United Barton States is Senate. the so guy look, who is in charge. If the Republicans take control it, of Congress, Mr. Barton will be in charge of regulating and policing these people next year. Just right, and the, and the problem is, and like I said before, this is just a strategy, a political strategy by the Democrats to distract attention away from the fact that most Americans disapprove of the job that President Obama has done on the oil spill, and that's the, that's the fact. That's what's going on. Justin, you say, you say that you're not happy, obviously, with the overall response by the administration. You have brought up waiving the Jones Act, as have others. Explain a little bit about why this would be a good step. Well, look, there are there are uh, ships in other countries, the Netherlands, from all around the world that uh, can help us with the skimming and keeping the oil off our shores. The Jones Act is an act that was passed in last century that basically prohibits these foreign ships from coming in and helping us. There have been requests for waivers of the Jones Act by the Obama administration. They haven't made that, and now legislation was actually filed by uh, U.S. senators uh, this this week in Congress to get the Jones Act. So we can get some of these foreign vessels. There should be an armada of ships helping out to prevent that oil from reaching the shores of Florida, Alabama, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Well, let's maybe, do it. maybe when let's Tony Hayward is done the yachting do uh, today, because yeah, it's a one day race, maybe he can bring his yacht over here and, and help True. out. They could join skip. the armada, Actually, Juliet. Yeah, listen, we have a, have a bite from uh, Richard Shelby. Listen to this. <laughs> that height of arrogance. He's, if he's, he's a CEO of, of BP. He was testifying in Washington before a congressional committee the other day, and now he's gone over to uh, be on his yacht over in England. I can tell you, that yacht ought to be down here skimming and cleaning up a lot of this oil, and he ought to be down here seeing what's really going on and not being in a cocoon somewhere. I mean, great I mean, minds think alike. It's you know? too rich. What can I say? It's too rich. It's too <laughs> right. rich. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us today. And, you know, we, we laugh about the, these things because it, it's, it's just so tragic and it's, you've got to have a little bit of levity, I guess. Uh, although the folks thanks, down Julia. there wouldn't say that. Um, thank you both for joining us today. Julia, we do appreciate thanks. it.